Hello, my name is Adam Boaz, and I am pleased and proud to welcome you to Poetry Night. Because this is 2020, this year's event is virtual, and I appreciate the support that you're showing our students by watching. Poetry Night is an annual event at King, and it marks the culmination of my senior elective, which is a class called Understanding, Appreciating, and Creating Poetry. In that class, the 12th graders spend the semester reading contemporary poets, learning about the technical devices and craft that poets employ, learning how to read, analyze, and interpret poetry, and of course, producing their own work. It's thrilling for me as a teacher to see them become students and creators of poetry, and I truly enjoy the talent and the creativity that they show. Poetry Night is the chance for them to display their skills. I truly believe that every person has at least one poem inside of them and that they need only show the courage to let it out. My students are doing this for you today. It does take courage for them to read. It's a very intimidating thing to create a piece of art and then share it with other people. And I remember the first year that I, I brought Poetry Night here to King and a student of mine said, hey, Mr. Boaz, we think you, you're always saying you're part of the class too. We think you should read a poem yourself. And so I did that that year and I've continued to honor that tradition. And so I'll be introducing Poetry Night with a poem of my own, which I wrote this year in response to some of the events that have taken place in this country. But I wrote it with a specific young person in mind. Um, and I have her in mind as I read it now. It is called Message to a small brown girl. Do that thing that has had you hiding in corners, the thing you wished to try all this time, because why not? Be that thing you wanted to be as a child, but abandoned due to fear or practicality. Dance that dance that you have been hiding with silenced hips. The one you wish to dance all this time, because why not? Be that dancer you want to be right now, but haven't been due to fear of a lack of grace. Wear that hair that you have tortured into straightness the way you wished to wear it all this time, because why not? Be that woman you want to be right now, but haven't been due to the need to fit in. Lift those eyes that you have kept lowered, the ones you wished to raise all this time, because why not? Be the vision you want to be right now, because their blindness is not your concern, and it will never touch you ever again. Thank you, and enjoy Poetry Night. I'm here now, but I'll probably be moved in five minutes. Kicked around just for fun. I'll roll around everywhere I go with no destination, but that's what I love most about my life, the fact that there's no destination. Admiring everything in my path, the world is my playground. This is Mr. Pebble. Kill me, kill me, and kill my cousins too. Kill my cousins red, and kill my cousins blue. Pull my whole family from our home. Leave us crippled and used. Leave our bodies strewn about in the streets and parks too. You knew, you knew, you knew what they said, but you thought you were different in your rational head. The scent of death will follow around, but that makes no difference to you. There will always be more of us, and we will always be part of you. 5.45, eyes open. Your warm feet touch the cold wood floor. Tank top, long, long, long vest, jacket, shorts, pants, pants, and ear warmers. You walk outside and hear the snap as the ice keeping your car door shut breaks. Now surrounded by people, but you could hear a pin drop. Everyone buzzing around like bees and getting ready, anticipating. Stop. You see her coming and you stop. You stop to listen. You look at the fog hovering over the still water excited and heart racing. 
You see a ripple disrupt, disrupt the still water as you place the black mat boat in the water. Shoom, click, shoom, click. All four girls work in perfect harmony, as if they were one. You stop. Here she comes, this time with a purpose. You prepare yourself as she says, attention, ready, go. And you're off. Waiting, sitting around with the rest. Will today be my day? Will I finally be chosen? I see everyone else flying around. It looks like so much fun, but still I sit here waiting and waiting and waiting. Finally, I see someone walk over. I know it's my turn. Something is different though. I'm not flying around like the rest. Instead, I'm spinning, getting dizzier and dizzier. Then suddenly something hits me and I fly through the air. Now I'm just dizzy and in pain. This wasn't as fun as it looks. Maybe next time I should stay sitting with the others. This species, normally very closed off, protecting themselves out of fear we will never know. But this one's different. Warmth resembles that of a blanket, hovering over and releasing comfort, constantly reiterating strength and love serving as a barrier for all hatred. Worries disappear, fears diminish, love and confidence arise. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, is what echoes through my head when in their presence. A sense of safety appears, a motivation to do better. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. The snow is falling hard. I ride the lift up to the top. Strap in and I'm ready to ride. Nothing else matters right now. The run has now begun, and I'm filled with joy. I get to the park and start with boxes, then a jump where I catch air. When I'm on the mountain, I have no care. This is my music, just riding there. Eternal life, planting seeds, the circle once again repeats. Lily of the valley sprouts in spring, one of these flowers to whom I will bring. Welcome your neighbor, embrace these beings. The tickle of excitement kindles the fire inside. It is the divine walking with our souls that feeds our lust for life. Stone-faced, no feeling. Only feeling I get is boredom when I'm reclined staring at the ceiling. They say there is a pandemic, I should stay inside. Feel like I'm serving a life sentence, but I have already died inside. People are hiding from each other because they're scared to contract the life-threatening disease that we can't pinpoint where it rests at. Wearing masks like we walking through cess. I can't see my girl in a prom dress. My life's a mess, your life's a mess. I'm blessed for my health and now I've stayed resilient. But there is a villain among us, slowly feeding us poison. Our brains are rewired, we're scared to death of something with no voice, no noise. Only thing you hear is a complaint and then a cough. Denial will kill you quicker than three hollow tips in a Kalishnikov. When we hear a little sniffle, it's like Pavlov and his dogs. We all think one thing, we gotta get far away from them. They are the cause of the problem that we are yet to solve. As time passes and our fears slowly dissolve, our doubt will increase. It seems that it seems that this virus has already reached its peak, but it hasn't. It's far from its pinnacle. I'm not trying to sound cynical, but it will take a miracle to not have this last for another minute, though. There is hope. The rope is fraying slowly, which is really not dope. There is still a light shining through this dark tunnel. We just got to have the right vision. All do our part. In order to finish, you need to start. Word. Waking up early, Sunday morning, driving through the countryside with my mind on the prize. I park, watching the sky turn brighter and the ripples in the water, standing on the bridge and releasing my line. At this point, all other worries have left my mind. Let the Sanko sink and be patient. Sooner or later, a fish will be in my presence. As I get knocked around this green felt, I meet new friends. We are diverse, different colors, different numbers. Some of us striped and some not, we all get along. In the end, just me remains. At the start, we are all here. I have watched my friends leave the table, one by one, with no goodbyes. Sad, to say the least. Sliding, speeding, and spinning across the felt, I hold my breath as the number eight on my chest rotates over the table one last time. Half past two on a sunny afternoon. Yet I'm stuck, sitting here in this room. The teacher goes on and on, 
never seeming to end. I check the clock again, half past two. My mind goes for a stroll, because this class has taken a toll. I'm in my bed, I'm playing soccer with friends, I'm at my wit's end. My eyes peer up again at that clock making me insane, and I cannot contain my pain when it's true that it's still only half past two. Out past the golf range, my friends and I lay looking up at the Milky Way. The Dudley Dome, we call it, where every star is visible. We talk about anything and everything, knowing no one can hear us, all the way up in Westport, New York. Protected by the Adirondacks and Lake Champlain. Tempest Fugit, and we're back home, waiting eagerly for the next 11 months to pass. But this time, we can't go back. Cancelled. We each look up into the sky from all around the country, but it's not the same. The name of my poem is Wishful Thinking. Wishful thinking is what I want, where worlds would stop, and I could wonder, who could I be? I would crash on through January, and shatter through June, and I would wake up in my room wondering what to do. While the world keeps spinning, I'll be sitting, wanting to make a new. Someone's here, bark. Who is it? Bark, bark, bark. I want food. Let's go for a walk. Throw the ball. Look, I'm running around a table. Click. Someone's at the door. Bark. Where's the door? Bark, bark, bark. My nose hits something. A wall? A chair? Who knows? I want food. I smell it. Let's go for a walk. Where's my leash? Did you throw the ball? I think this is a table. Look at me run around it. Thud. I ran into the table. Turn on the lights. It only used to be dark at night. <laughs>